Hey everybody, welcome back. So we've got Jurassic Park Day today. And we're going to be talking about the Velociraptor that's contained in this cage right here. And anybody that is seriously considering getting an aisle monitor needs to watch this. Uh, we're going to look over some enclosure things. We're going to look over and talk about his temperament. I'm going to do a water change on this enclosure because it's that time again. And we're going to do a little bit of interaction with him. And just kind of show you guys um, how tricky they can be to work with sometimes. So you don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back in Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Okay guys, so Nile monitors are incredibly easy to get. And that's about where the easy stops with these guys. You know, when you find hatchling baby Nile monitors, you're looking 12, 18 inches long, tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. They're just adorable little dinosaurs, you know. And, you know, they're so easy to interact with. If they bite you and they get a hold of you, it really doesn't make much difference, you know. They'll, and they, they seem to adapt to you pretty easily at first and things. And, you know, we all work with them and, and keep interacting with them and so forth. And that's pretty much where the easy stops with these guys. Um, Nile monitors are probably one of the most difficult uh, reptiles to keep, in my opinion, period. <laughs> I've got large constrictors here. I've got 15-foot reticulated pythons. 13, 14 foot Burmese pythons, got black and white tegus, um, boa constrict or boa imperators rather, uh, arboreal green tree pythons, things like that. And of all the animals that I've got here, I would have not really any problem at all taking a novice and you know teaching them a little bit and letting them handle these animals. Um, that's one thing I would definitely, definitely not do with my Nile monitor. Um, I would, and I know some great keepers. I know some great snake keepers and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't feel comfortable letting any of them interact with this lizard because there's a couple things about their personality and a couple things about keeping these guys. Once they grow up and once they start getting a little bit bigger, that can be really tricky. And we're going to talk about some of those things today. First thing that we're going to talk about, of course, is the enclosure size. Uh, as you can see, the enclosure that I've got behind me right now is down in my basement. I've got a full-size bathtub built into it. And we're getting ready to do a water change on him because he has made a mess of his house in no uncertain terms. You know, and now we're looking at him breaking the five-foot mark as far as his length goes. Uh, he is very, very on point about food. You've got to be really careful with this guy around feeding time. Because anything that's in range, when he's hungry and he smells that food, he's going after it. Uh, so it, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time working with these guys. And there's one thing that I hear Clint Laidlaw say pretty frequently that I think is just awesome. And what that is, is if you're watching this to determine if a Nile monitor is the right pet lizard for you, it's not in any, any way, shape, or form. Uh, this is this is an advanced reptile hands down and a conversation you're gonna find videos out there of people that have got Nile monitors that are well socialized that they can interact with really well um, and these people have spent hours and hours and hours thousands of hours with these animals to get them socialized to that level and keep them comfortable. Um, you're gonna see a lot of Asian water monitors that tend to socialize a little bit easier. Um, a lot of the black dragons and so forth, like you'll see with, uh, you know, Keenan out of Camp Keenan has one. Uh, Kevin out at Nerd has got, he breeds them. He does an awesome job with his monitors out there. And the Asian water monitors will be a little bit easier to socialize than the Niles will. Uh, I put out another video a while back about these guys that shows them in the wild in Africa actually packing down packs of lions. Um, when they're small, they're going to be afraid of you. And, you know, they're going to act accordingly and so forth, and you can calm them down a little bit. And there's kind of a sweet spot in there where they go from being afraid to before they get really, really bold. 
where I think a lot of people get comfortable. And if you keep doing the right thing with them, you can have that good interactions and keep that going. It's real easy though, as they, as they age, as they get a little bit older, they start to feel themselves, they start going through that lizard puberty and they really get bold. This lizard right here, when he comes out, when you see him in a little bit, he's not afraid of me. He is not the least bit afraid of me at all. Uh, he has no bones about it. As soon as I open it up that cage, he can crawl up on me. If he's curious that day, we're going to have a good interaction. If he's feeling feisty that day, he's opening his mouth and he's going to come at me. And I've been bitten by him several times. A couple times on the hands. I had one time where he was crawling up on me and he bit me on the back of the neck and just hung on there for a little while. Um, you've really got to be careful with how much you trust these guys. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about his enclosure and how I've got it set up. And this is the best way, best way to do it. You can see the screen in the area over there. And I've got his tub set up where I framed everything, you know, attached the, the frame to the tub and then attached the frame to the other part of the enclosure over there. Um, you've got to support the tub off the floor. So I built a frame for it that supports the weight of the tub when it's full and you just put a regular tub kit on it and when I get to the other side you'll see the valve where I drain it from. Um, so you've got to have it elevated just enough. Fortunately, and I don't know if you can see it or not from over here, but there's a floor drain. So I built this thing sitting directly over top of the floor drain. And if you come around here, so you can see there's the tub. I've got platforms that I put on top of it so that he can still get under and swim in the water down there. And he gets up here. This is where he eats generally. Uh, I've got this door that hinges up there and a hook that it attaches to up here in the ceiling. So I just unlatch it, lift it all the way up. And then I can access this whole area in here for cleaning and handling and so forth. And then over here on the other side, of course, I put ladders in there for him to get in and out of the tub, a ladder to get up to the next platform, and his basking platform. And all I did was secure the screen to the top of this and I've got the light set. I just adjusted the height, a couple little screws on here, or a couple little uh, wires and so forth. Adjusted the height of it so that I'm getting the right temperature down there for him. And then underneath, he's got really thick substrate that he can crawl around in. And he spends little to no time in there. He spends so much of his time in his water. Um, which just goes to show that if you're gonna have these guys, you've got to have an ample water supply for him. They absolutely love it. He sleeps in there every day. I can't tell you the last time I really saw him sleeping anywhere else. Every now and then he'll sleep on his platform here. Most of the time he's down in the water. And I look down here, this is the valve that I was talking about. So I just turn that valve. There's the floor drain right there. It just drains right down into the floor. And it gives me an opportunity to get in there and clean his house. You going to come hang out while I clean your house? Hmm? Come hang out while I clean your house. And you'll see here that you've just got to be really deliberate when you're working with these guys because they're not as easy to read as a snake is. Um, you know, like a snake, once you kind of shut down their food response and you see that they're comfortable, they're pretty much good to go at that point. When you're working with monitor lizards, these guys are just as smart and they are so reactive and their mood can change on a drop of a hat. Um, he's kind of on point right now and just kind of looking around and checking stuff out. And, you know, he knows what's happening because I, you know, change his water pretty regularly in here. But his mode can change in a second. Something can get his attention and he can just get immediately on point get snippy, start getting defensive, um, or just decide that he wants to remind you that it's his world and take a pop at you. So you gotta be really, really cautious when working with these guys. And you can see this guy's got a little bit of size to him. He's between two and three years old right now. And he is not the, uh, the little 18 inch baby. Not the little cutie, 
that he was when we got him. Now he's a big cutie. And it's getting really close to summertime here. Come on, bud. Stand out for a minute. See? You can see this is a really, really powerful animal. And you can, the claws on him will just rip you to shreds. If you let him get excited when you're handling him. <laughs> and before I start filling his tub back up, as soon as that hose goes down there, he loves to play in it. So we're gonna interact with him a little bit. And don't forget guys, if you're enjoying the videos, get down there and smash the like button. It helps to get it out to more people. I'd really like to see more subscribers jump on board, hit the subscribe button. And I've also got the Amazon affiliate link down at the bottom. If you like the shirt, I'm going to put the one up there for the sign too. Do you want to treat? Want to treat? Huh. more in there. Now you guys will see, I talk a lot about caution when we're working with Nile monitors. And as you can see, I mean, these guys aren't cold-blooded killers or anything like that. They can be kept. They can be kept, you know, pretty reasonably at times. But we always just got to make sure that you don't lapse for a second. When you're working with these guys, you're always watching their body language, always seeing what they're doing. There's a couple things that are really kind of important to point out about these guys too, is that we really socialize and work with these animals on their own terms. Um, you're not going to force this guy to do anything that he doesn't want to do. You know, right now, he seems pretty mellow, pretty chilled out. I just gave him a little bit of a treat and he ate some eggs. But... He doesn't, uh, he doesn't necessarily want to hang out a whole lot right now. He likes to just go off and kind of do his own thing. And these last couple weeks have been kind of disappointing because I love getting this guy outside. When I, get that, uh, when I get that harness on him and we go outside, he will just walk around the yard all day long, climbing up trees, swimming through the creek. Um, it's really, 
really good exercise for him and it's really important because you know this enclosure is nowhere near as big as it needs to be for him um, he has outgrown this thing with a quickness and they will do that they they come up to size pretty quickly i mean like i said he's not even three years old yet and i mean he's five feet long And we've got him at a really opportune time right now as well because you know having just filled his tub up it hasn't had time to warm yet so that water is still pretty cold down there which means he's still pretty cold so doing good buddy you want to stay up here just to show you a couple of things on him you can see uh, you can see all of this muscle on his leg right here these are just such powerful animals and I'm sure you can see these claws right there they are razor sharp and there goes your one And this is kind of a good sign right here. See how he splayed his legs out like that? When they relax, they're gonna spread their legs out, settle down onto their belly. You'll notice if he ends up getting really angry here, they'll go up, make themselves look bigger, jump up on their legs like, or I'm not jump up, but you know, lift up on their legs like that, their throat blows out. And if they're doing that, you just about guarantee it's time to leave them alone. And you can see just this little bit of handling here. He's already drawn blood and he hasn't even moved quickly. Yeah, it's just his weight and how sharp those claws are. And his tail right here. I'm trying to keep my hand here to keep him from going back into the water because I want to keep him up here. But you can see how thick this tail is. Can't even get my hand all the way around it. It's just this is one huge muscle. And that's typically their first line of defense. You know, the first thing they're gonna do when they start feeling threatened is they're gonna cock that tail back. And as soon as you see that, you get a little bit closer and you're gonna get hit with it. Come on, bud. So as I'm sure you guys can see, you know, 
just handling these guys alone you know even really slow stuff like this they will get you It's a good boy. It's a good boy. And you can see just how big these guys are, man. But if you don't spend a lot of time really socializing these guys and working with them, um, like I said, he doesn't have any fear of me, and it's not because I'm particularly having the relationship with him. Niles don't have any fear because they don't have any fear. <laughs> like I said, they um, they they will fight anything. So that that spirit in these animals is something that you really can't break. You just got to get really good at negotiating with them. They're right, buddy. Like I say, he likes to spend most of his time in the water. As soon as he gets done with anything, as soon as we get done handling him, as soon as he's done running around outside, as soon as he's done eating, you know, he'll jump up on his basking platform when he needs to. But most of the time, he is perfectly happy living in that tub. And you're gonna see a lot of people, you know, posting videos of putting their animals in the bathtub and letting them swim around and things like that, which is all well and good but you see i have the bathtub built into his enclosure here uh, these animals they require a lot of water um you know any small kind of water receptacle or something there, there's no enrichment value in that at all they love being in the water they love being submerged he will swim around in there as much as he can because of the size now but <clears throat> just having a water bowl in there is not sufficient they've got to be able to get into something that's at least as long as they are um and you know, preferably a foot or two deep so that they've got room to, you know, get in there and move around. And like I said, he's already outgrown his enclosure. The next one that I'm going to be building, I want to get it done this summer, as soon as I figure out how everything is going to, you know, set up in here. Um, the next one he's getting is going to be about three times this size. I'm going to do this a similar setup, but I'm taking the standard tub out and the whole enclosure is going to be built around a full-size garden tub, one of the huge almost hot tub looking things um, so I'm gonna build the whole thing around that frame it up just like this I'm gonna have one section of it where it's enclosed behind plexiglass um, that's gonna be a little bit more humid for him and it's where his basking spots gonna be and we're gonna have a lot of platforms a lot of stuff for him to climb around on because they are literally little spider men they he loves climbing up on stuff and Anytime you guys work with the Nile monitors, we was really fortunate today because he had a really good disposition today. Um, you know, gave him a little treats. He got to interact a little bit. And he was just really mellow. Part of that is because when I, you know, first filled his tub up, that water going in there is kind of cold for him. So of course, when they're cooler, they're going to mellow out a little bit more. When he gets out and his body temperature gets warmed up and that metabolism kicks in, man. You can open up that door and you can guarantee he's going to sail across it at some point, you know. So you've really, really got to pay attention when you're working with these guys. Take my word for it. I've been bitten by some big snakes. And this five-foot water monitor, when it bites you, it hurts just as bad, if not worse. Um, so, so they're really somebody that you've got to pay attention to because you're not always going to be able to predict what's going on in their head. And one of the reasons why I wanted to put this video out is because, you know, the other day I seen this, seen this person post, um, you know, their little glass aquarium 
where they've got two Nile monitors sitting in it and they're basking and they've got a water receptacle big enough for them. They've got their basking platform. You know, they've got some kind of deep substrate and they're just in there. They're chilling. Um, guys talking about how, you know, how perfect their setup is and all that. Well, there's so much more that's coming with these animals. Um, it's not like a bearded dragon where you can get them set up in a you know decent size enclosure and keep them in there. Now you guys can see how much space one Nile monitor takes up and this enclosure is a third the size that he needs to be in that he's going to be in when I get the new one built for him. And they're not an animal that you need to be cohabitating. Um, you know these animals can fight and they can hurt each other bad. Um, you know, you're going to hear all kinds of different things about cohabit animals and so forth. I err on the side of not getting my animals killed. So, I don't cohab them. You know, some people may get away with it forever. You never know. But, I mean, you can even see when you're putting males in with females to breed them. You know, sometimes a female just doesn't like them and starts ripping them to shreds. Um, these animals, they're not kumbaya all the time. You may get lucky for a while, but... They are capable of killing each other, and they will do it sometimes. So that's why it kind of concerns me when I see people that are getting new Nile monitors, and you know, you see them two, three in a little enclosure, and you know, you project out to what you need to actually care for those animals. You know, an enclosure three times this size, at least, per animal. I mean, this thing takes up a quarter of my reptile room down here, just about you know, given space to walk around and so forth. It's going to be real interesting to see when I get this thing upgraded how all of this space is going to play in. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it yet. I would really like to find a bigger place first, but you know, that's one of the things about keeping these animals. We're not always going to have the ideal circumstances and we've just got to adjust things to fit the animal. Uh, even if it's a big inconvenience, even if we don't know how we're going to do it, we've got to be able to figure it out and implement that to give these guys the best life they can you know i offset that with him right now just which is why i'm waiting for summer to get here because i really want to get that harness on him and me and him just go out in the backyard and we'll stay out there for a couple hours uh pretty frequently and he loves it he comes back in and he's just he'll get up on his basking platform for a second and jump in a tub and stay there and go to sleep till the next day when we go out now, any of you guys that know me or have watched me for any length like of time know I am a huge proponent of encouraging people to get reptiles, encouraging people to get you know into the community and so forth. Uh, but I am also really big on doing it responsibly, and this is one of those instances. Just like I said earlier, with uh, you know Clint's famous phrase: "If you're watching this to figure out if a Nile monitor is the right pet lizard for you, it's not. Hands down." bar none, end of conversation. There's smaller things that you can work with. There's Aki monitors and things like that. You know, even if you, you're being bold and you've got the space and you want to work with a larger one, you know, Asian water monitors are a better choice than Niles are because I, I guarantee you that, you know, you're going to have challenges with this animal, whether it be in handling, whether it be in socialization, whether it be in the enclosure, uh, or any any combination of those um, you know they're not an easy beginner reptile they can be good to work with you know they can be socialized they can interact you know just like he was today he wasn't too thrilled about it but you know enticing him with a couple quail eggs there and he was pretty happy about that but this this is a this is a pet lizard to be taken very seriously and you know, when I see the people that have got, you know, they're showing off their babies and they've got two of them in a little little enclosure and, you know, they, they, they are asking beginner questions about it. You've already got those animals there. Um, and and you're, you're biting into a huge commitment when you buy an aisle monitor. In the course of a couple of years, you are going to find yourself an animal that is going to need an enclosure, you know, two or three times this size. And I'm really looking forward to doing the build video on that. I'm going to have that out hopefully this summer. Um, but you're going to have one that is going to require a lot of space. It's going to require a lot of food. 
because these guys eat and eat and eat and they're going to be a challenge to handle. I mean, as you can see here, I mean, he scratched me up pretty good and he was being nice. He was just trying to get back into his water, being nice and casual. You could see there was no anxiety there in him at all. Then even being nice, I mean, I've got to go on here and spray myself off with Listerine now. So I was hoping the weather was going to cooperate with us this week and we was going to be able to get outside and do a really cool video with him. But we did an inside video instead. Now, like I said, like, get subscribed to the channel because we're going to be going outside with him, getting some good footage out there, and we'll talk a lot more about him. So I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing Niles. He is a lot of fun to work with. But I really strongly encourage anybody, if you're thinking about getting a Nile monitor and you've never had one before, message me first. <laughs> We've got some things to talk about. Uh, so you guys have an outstanding day, and I'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.